G'day guys, welcome back to another install video. In this one, we're gonna be chucking in a cheap Chinese diesel heater for those cold winter's nights coming up. It gets bloody cold where we are, so let's get straight into it. Also guys, before we get into it, you're probably gonna notice me rocking the out and about beanie. So this is just some new merch that I'm trialing out, seeing how it goes, seeing if I like it, and if I'd like to you know, put it up there for you guys. If you guys are interested in merch and maybe you wanna support the channel a little bit, leave us a comment, let me know, and we'll do what we can to get these things in. All right guys, let's get into the video. Right, so here we are in the van. This is what comes in the mail, our diesel heater. Right, so here is everything out on the bench exactly as it came out of the kit. Uh, your fixtures and things like that come out of a separate box inside the main one, but we'll go through all the components. So here we are, here's the main diesel heater. You've got your control panel, so your manual control panel here, and your remote control key fob. You've got your fuel tank, so we've got the 10 litre fuel tank here. Fuel line, you've got a fair bit of fuel line there, way more than what we're gonna need. Nice, fairly good wiring loom. A pretty useless set of instructions, if I'm being honest. The only thing worth looking at is probably the diagram. You've got your base plate for the diesel heater to mount to and to go through the floor. You've got your vent hoses. The, the metal pipe, we'll call it that, is your exhaust pipe. This is your inlet. Got a nice T-piece in case you want to split up your heating air. You've got your vent outlets. They feel pretty firm and they swivel 360 degrees so you can move that to wherever you want air some rubber fuel line and then you've got your all your fittings your hose clamps uh, filter and your fuel filter that looks more like a fuel strainer if I'm being honest all your screws nuts bolts that sort of thing and your muffler so you've got your muffler there a nice little L bracket to mount it with and two brass self tapping screws plan is I'm thinking about mounting this diesel heater under the seat. So if I open that up for you guys, you can see there's plenty of room in there. I've already been under the van, had a quick look, and it looks like there's gonna be no dramas mounting it almost anywhere in here. So we're gonna do some marking out, jump underneath, make sure it's we don't stuff anything up, and let's go from there. The golden rule is always measure twice, cut once. Make sure you're not gonna hit anything, make sure you're not gonna stuff anything up. So let's measure this thing up properly, mark it out, and show you guys where we're gonna drill this hole. I'll tell you what, <laughs> it makes it very real when you look down and you can see daylight coming through the, the floor of your van. So, <laughs> I'm stoked. I'm absolutely stoked that I hit, I hit nothing. So, that's awesome. All right, let's mount this base plate down and get this thing installed properly. <laughs> Righto, so once you've got your holes drilled, um, you Better off just to put your plate and everything together while it's up here on the bench. Save your stuffing around while it's down there in place. So take that fuel cap off and your plate should just drop straight on like that. And you can go ahead and fasten up your bolts. That way you've only got to mount your, mount your plate down. Um, totally up to you how you, how you do it, but that's, um, that's usually the easiest way I've, that I've found. Right, it's a little half a bolt tightening extraordinaire. Jump up here, you're gonna put these bolts on with me? Oh, yes. let's put these nuts on. So you're gonna put them on these and tighten them up. Yes. Good one. Right, right now it's time to fit the vents. So this is what they give you in the kit. They're actually pretty good. They swivel 360 degrees. So uh, you can aim air sort of wherever you want in the van. So you have to put two in. You have to put one for the inlet, one for the outlet. You don't have to have any hose going to the outlet, but uh, you still need to have a vent some way for that air to get back into the heater and 
push you know push hot air back out through your van so I don't have a hole saw big enough to do this so what I'm going to do I'll flip you around rather than me go out and buy a hole saw just for this one job I'm just trying to join the circle just traced around the outside and then I'm just going to run around the outside uh, on that line with a uh, seven mil drill bit and then just cut out the rest so then just tidy it up there's enough room there so if you run your drill right around the outside on that line you've still got enough of a lip where it's not going to show uh, and you can still get enough purchase to mount this thing onto the wall so that should do nicely We've got the diesel heater mounted in place here. All the cabling and all the wiring is just um, sitting in there at the moment. Nothing's been connected. Plan is I'm going to run the cabling up around this back wall, nice, neat, and tidy. Bring it back down to the SeaTac unit. I've got a spare fuse in here, so I'm going to use that. That hole here is uh, for the cable going down to the fuel pump. That's uh, I've already dropped that down through the hole. Uh, that's going to plug in, and then I'm going to elastic that hole up. So make that all nice, neat, and tidy, and uh, won't be that neat and tidy, but at least it'll be sealed up. That's pretty much it for the electrics. Right, so if you haven't seen one of these fuel tanks before, they come with this little piece for your, your diesel. So this is your little outlet. They don't come with a hole in the bottom. Uh, you can choose which direction you have this thing mounted and you drill your own hole accordingly. There is a trick to getting this thing from your spout here all the way down to your outlet. I've seen so many people just drop it straight into the, the neck here and just hope for the best and shake it around until it pops out the end. Don't do that. There's a better way of doing it. Go get yourself a nice little piece of wire. What you want to do is just put it through the end like so. Make a little bend like that, just so it can't come back off. And then just drop it straight down to where it is that you need, wherever your hole is. And then all you've got to do is just pull your little fitting through to your right there and then Pull your wire back through, put your O-ring on and lock it down with your lock nut. And she's done. So you can see up here as well, I got a little bit carried away. I've done all the fuel lines. So I've connected up all the fuel lines down to the fuel filter. Uh, obviously nothing's permanent yet, nothing's been mounted. I've just fitted this into place. Run the fuel line across, through the chassis rail, and back into the fuel pump. And from the fuel pump, that line just follows along, back through the chassis rail again, behind the air intake, and up into the unit. I tried to go, oh, swing it around. I tried to go up here, through the chassis rail, and behind the fuel intake, just to keep that away from, as far away as I could from the exhaust. The last thing you want is that exhaust getting you know, red hot and heating up this fuel line. So I'll just try to keep that as far away as I could by going behind this air intake and then back through the sh uh, chassis rail so it can't, you know, come over this way and maybe contact that. So here's your cable as well for the uh, fuel pump. Just really basic, all you do is just click it on, click it over the, the pump over here. So I'm just gonna run that to the same spot, click that onto the pump and it's got a little locking ring there, locking tab, so you pull that up when you wanna take it off click it down when it goes on. I'll chuck that on and you guys will see it when all of this has been run in permanently with conduit and cable ties and clips and all the good stuff. Righto, so we're up under the van at the moment. I'll just show you how this install looks. Um, I've just tied everything up and neatened it up a little bit. So this is pretty much how it's gonna be staying. So from your fuel tank, you've got your fuel line coming out. So there wasn't really anywhere to clip this to either. So 
So I've just come straight out from here to where the fuel filter is. So I've just put some split conduit over the whole fuel line um, just to give it a little bit more protection. But anyway, there's a fuel filter. It's gonna go through there, come through the fuel line this way to the chassis rail, go through the chassis rail to the fuel pump. Then uh, the cable for the fuel pump, you can probably see straight above. That goes back through the chassis rail and up through that hole. Um, and that'll just get siliconed up. So from the fuel pump, again in conduit, follows the chassis rail across goes over the top of the air inlet for the combustion through the chassis rail again and up to the unit. Up fairly high, tucked up away, away from anything that can really damage the fuel line. All right, so I got a little bit carried away uh, and finished most of it. I'll show you guys how I've done the control panel just so uh, you've got a little bit of an idea and show you how the wiring from the unit and the cable loom and everything goes together. So swing in here and I'll show you how it goes. All right, so. Here we are, here's the heater itself. So you've got your main uh, wiring loom that comes out of here. So I've just wrapped that back around and underneath the inlet. So that just ducks underneath and then comes back around the back. So I've just tucked all the cables in there for the moment. Uh, keep moving along. I've just used a couple of these little sticky cable tie mounts uh, and I'm just tying all the cables along that. So across along that back wall and up the side back to the main wiring loom that the factory Jayco one and into the SeaTac. So I'm using just a spare uh, a spare fuse out of there. Uh, I've just had to upgrade the fuse from seven and a half to a 10 amp fuse, but that's pretty much how I've got this thing running. The power for the fuel pump just goes, is this little one right here, it just goes down. I've just elastic the hole up that I had to cut in the floor for it, but that's where that cable goes, straight down through the floor, and it's about uh, 100 mil to the fuel pump itself. That's pretty much how all the cabling ran. Oh, and the main harness just follows that run back up to here. So that's the cable for the display, display panel. I've just mounted that up the top here, and that just runs down through the hole that comes to the front. So here we go. Everything's wired up and ready to go. Right, guys, so install's done. I've just put fuel in the tank. Everything's primed up, ready to go. Let's turn this thing on and I'll give you guys a bit of an idea of how loud it is, both in the van, outside the van, what the exhaust sounds like and what the infamous fuel pump tick sounds like, both in and out of the van. So let's get this thing cranked up. Righto, so I thought this would be a good little test. I'm just gonna record this while the, um, while the heater's running almost full tilt and see what the noise is like, but operating the unit. So I'll overlay some footage here of the little control panel, but you've got the control panel that you can run the, the unit with. And you've also got a little handheld uh, remote dongle that comes with it as well. So it's already paired up straight out of the box. You don't have to worry about it, uh, but it's just an on off and up and down. So. It depends whether you have your heater set on temperature control or fan control. For us, I think we're just going to set the temperature. If you want to go the other way and have uh, your heater on the lowest setting, so the lowest fan speed and the lowest fuel consumption, you'll save some diesel, but something to note is that you could potentially clog up your diesel heater itself with some carbon. So it's just a good idea to run it at absolute full tilt just for a couple of minutes when, you, when you're packing your van down uh, or before you use it and just burn out all that carbon and try to keep it clean. All right guys, hopefully you can hear that. This is pretty much as loud as the unit's gonna get. So this is on startup. This thing's gonna try to run the fan pretty much flat out. I've got it set on automatic. So uh, it's trying to get to a preset temperature. I've got it set at 19 degrees and it is 16 degrees now inside the van. So it's just gonna keep on trying to get up to that 19 degrees. And once it gets to that 19, it'll drop back to uh, the slowest fan speed. But this is about as loud as it's gonna get for us. I'll take you outside and you can hear what this thing's like on startup outside. Righto, so you can probably hear the exhaust. The exhaust is fairly loud when it starts up. Uh, and that's, you know, to be, you know, to be expected, it's an exhaust pipe of, a, of an internal combustion engine. So um, I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear that on camera, but you've, you might be able to hear the tick there's a tick, 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 tick of the fuel pump in there as well. Right, I will swing underneath the van and I'll show you the infamous fuel pump. You can probably hear that fuel pump ticking away, but again, that's as loud as it's going to get for us. So yeah, I guess these things do make a little bit of noise, but it's not 
it's not going to be anything too dramatic for us. This is pretty much the loudest that it's going to get, and that's getting picked up by this mic here on my chest. So definitely not going to be a drama for us, especially being that we're pretty much free camping most of the time. So we're not going to be around anyone, so we're not going to bother anyone. And as long as we can put up with the noise, I've, I think for the five minutes that thing's going to run up to temperature, it'll be fine. All right, so the unit's just reached 19 degrees inside the van. So the fan's just cut right back to its lower setting. So I'll just pause for a minute and give you guys a listen. So that's it on its lowest setting. It's fairly quiet. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. You can still hear it. You still know there's a fan going, but it's, it's not gonna bother us one bit, especially with two screaming kids, soon to be three screaming kids. It's, we're not even gonna notice that that fan's going. So I'm very happy with the way this fan is. And again, I'll just stop for a second and see if you, see if you can hear the fuel pump. There's, there's the slightest, slightest little tick. It's definitely there, but I'm never gonna notice it. And I'm sitting right above where that fuel pump is mounted. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much our little install of our cheap $150 Chinese diesel heater. Pretty easy job, I'm not gonna lie. It, it was a bit nerve wracking cutting a big whopping hole in the floor of, a, of our van, but everything worked out fine. Seems to be working the way it should be. And this is definitely not a review though, guys. I'm not reviewing this thing until I've had a really good workout of it. Figured out the ins and outs and how the, how the system's supposed to work, but that'll definitely be in another episode. I'll review this Chinese heater. But until then, guys, if you have one of these heaters or if you're thinking about putting one in, leave a comment down below let me know what you guys think or what to look out for the tips the tricks the good the bad the ugly all of it always like hearing new things from you guys so leave that in the comments and if you haven't already like share subscribe all that good stuff get out and about and we'll see you in the next one see you guys